Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today here on our live product session. So today we'll be taking a closer look at some of the new functionality that we've released over the summer and see how, how you can basically take the most out of it. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Daniel and I'm the product manager for Point. And today I'm joined uh, by our product design lead, Alexandra. Hi, hello everyone. Uh, before we start, uh, just uh, a couple of housekeeping rules here. So all registrants, as always, will receive a recording of this, this session, but I do hope that you will stick with us until the very end because we will have a Q&A session. Uh, and so feel free to use the Q&A function on the right-hand side uh, of your screens to ask us any questions during, during the uh, session. Also, please don't be shy. Uh, your thoughts and experience are very, very important to us. So uh, you can use the Q&A function as well to uh, talk, talk to us about any current challenges that you have so that we can address them in the future. And also feel free to share your experiences related to the topics that we are currently discussing. Moving forward, uh, for those of you who are new to these sessions, um, many of you do know, know us as a company, but for those of you who don't, let me just briefly introduce Siski to you. So we are a software development company founded uh, 15 years ago. Uh, we create uh, innovative, high quality and easy to use governance and management solutions for Microsoft 365 and SharePoint. And we are trusted by more than 3,500 uh, 3, customers around the world, some of which you can see here on the right-hand side. Uh, that being said, uh, let's see what we will be discussing and going through today. First of all, uh, our goal for today is to demo, demo as much as possible. So this means that Alex will show you how you can use Point to immediately pinpoint and basically quickly address some of uh, the key oversharing risks uh, through our Copilot readiness functionality. Uh, I believe on our last webinar, we said that even before oversharing was a buzzword, we were leading the charge uh, by addressing who has access to what. And uh, we've shown you how Syskit Point can, become, uh, can help you to become Copilot ready, but most importantly, to stay Copilot ready. And now with uh, the new functionality that we have released, we have uh, even get this to a higher level. We've done a step more in this. After that, um, we will continue with the demos, uh, but I'll be showing you our latest addition to our storage management functionality. And this is automated versioning limits or version limit enforcement, however you want to call it. So we'll go through how to set up versioning limits, uh, how to enforce them on your sites and across your tenant. Uh, just to ensure that your storage consumption and associated costs with that do not get out of hand. And we'll end up with uh, a functionality that a lot of our customers have been waiting for, and this is a metadata review. So uh, this is something that will be rolling out very, very soon. If it's not already on your uh, Syskit Point uh, instance, it will be there very soon. Uh, so, uh, in this case, um, this is the functionality that, as I said, a lot of the customers have been waiting for, and this is where you will be able to ask your owners to provide you with the metadata that helps you, as IT teams, manage uh, workspaces in a more efficient way, and it makes it easier for you to implement proper governance procedures with our uh, policy uh, automation rules. Again, as I said, feel free to share your own experiences related to the topics as we, uh, what we discussed and ask any questions you might have during the session. We will try to address them at the end. That being said, uh, it's over to Alex. Thank you, Daniel. But actually it's over to you guys because it's time for a question. So we were wondering about what is the approach that your organization is likely to take when managing your M365 workspaces? So you will see a poll on your screen right now, and please just answer as honest as you can, and then we will talk about the results. Okay, I think we can close the poll. So the second answer, delegate with automation if no action is taking, is what most of you guys 
uh, actually selected. So we will see how we can help you with the exact use case of automating when no action is taken. Okay, so we can move on to our presentation just to give you a brief overview of the co-pilot readiness style. So uh, as we already talked in our previous sessions, if you were with us, uh, around 60% of M365 users cited that oversharing data loss and content sprawl is a top risk in their environment, which is actually highlighting that this is an ongoing problem that needed to be solved. Uh, we also heard that a lot from our own customers, uh, mostly from health and insurance industries, who are especially focused on addressing these concerns. Uh, another thing that is interesting is that Gartner reports shown that 30% of enterprises have experienced some sort of AI security breaches, with oversharing again being a leading cause of these breaches, which means that immediate action needed to be taken to protect your sensitive information before you're actually rolling out Copilot. And while the Copilot is trending, it's a buzzword and you're being pushed to quickly roll it out, many IT teams actually struggle to raise awareness within uh, their own organizations about uh, potential risks of, uh, and instances of oversharing sensitive content, as well as some unnecessary content. And that is why we actually went in this direction. So the new dashboard that I will showcase uh, in a minute, uh, raises awareness of oversharing challenges. It is pinpointing uh, the most important features from Cisco Point that can help you get ready for Copilot. And these features are created not only to help you prevent oversharing in the future, but also to clean up the existing oversharing issues that you have. And how we did it, we actually uh, basically put in spotlight the existing and some of the newly created reports from Cisco Point and some of the new uh, functionalities in a single tile that is positioned on your home screen. Uh, and once again, with the same aim to help you prepare for the Copilot rollout. So by raising awareness, we're helping you see exactly where your data might be overshared, but we're also helping you to dig deeper and take necessary actions to clean up all the sharing that is unnecessary, to clean up all the permissions, so to make sure to suggest that your data stays secure and it is only accessible to the right people. And finally, uh, what most of you actually answered in the poll, we will help you automatically resolve some challenges and help you, actually we're here to help you prevent oversharing in the future and keep an eye on it for you so it doesn't become your problem again. But maybe it would be better if I show it to you guys in action. So I will now move on to the demo part to show you what it actually looks like. Okay. So now you're seeing a uh, Syskit Points homepage. And the tile that we talked about is right here. It's the Copilot Readiness tile. And the first thing that I want to show you is the potential risk of having some private workspaces in your tenant that are shared with large groups, such as everyone, everyone except external users and old users. And why is that important or dangerous? Is because sharing these kind of workspaces to the, such a lot of people may lead to uh, security breaches. It is also giving you some uh, challenges with access control, etc. And you are actually you are actually having oversharing issues if you have these groups here. Okay, so on this list, I can see that these four private workspaces have been shared with these large groups. What I can do here is I can remove access simply by clicking remove access here and then this action will remove access to all of the three large security groups that we just talked about. I can do this one by one or if I want to do it in bulk I can also select all of the workspaces and remove access straight from here. If for any reason uh, you think that for example the financial markets wizards should remain shared with those large groups, you're okay with it. You can also decide to accept risk and then it will not show on the screen to you for the number of days that you actually define here. So for 30, 90, six months or a year. Then after this time passes, obviously it will become visible to you once again here. Another thing you can do is view history. So you can see a history of all the, all the actions that happened on which workspaces. Uh, when this was written, when this was resolved, who completed it, did they have any comments recorded on it, etc. So everything stays written right here. 
once you completed this part, let's move on to uh, the other things here. So you can also evaluate other large groups. I will not go into details here because the process is exactly the same. You're just looking into some other large groups besides these ones that we just shown. But what is interesting is if you have policy that says that their workspaces should have a limited amount of members, then we will show you the ones that have too many. And why is that an issue, you might ask? because having too many members can once again complicate your workspace management and it is difficult to uh, control your access and permissions when there are too many members involved, once again leading to security concerns, diffusion of responsibility, etc. So here I can see that my policy in my company is to have maximum 15 members, which is quite low, but just for this demo purposes. But here I see, okay, all of these have more. What I can do once again, accept risk if I'm okay with it, or I can see members and directly remove their access from the screen. Again, you have history and all the logs as well. Another interesting thing about memberships or actually users is the workspaces that have shadow users. Uh, those users uh, actually have access to the specific content on your sites, but they're not members of any M365 groups or teams that are related or associated with this site. And actually having these people here is again but a potential security risk for you, for you and you are potentially oversharing once again. So I can see here that on this site right here, I have 15 shadow users. I can see who they are and once again, easily remove them straight from this screen. Moving on to the sharing links, I believe you are maybe more familiar with this one. So we have uh, some new reports here and we also have some reports that were improved for this purpose. So the company-wide links report that you're seeing here actually shows all the files that have been shared with the entire company, but from private teams, private groups and private sites. So reports have a sensitivity down to file level information, so you can pinpoint the most sensitive data as well. So here you're seeing, okay, I have all these files that were shared company-wide. I can select single file and remove its sharing link from here, or I can once again do it in bulk and just remove everything just to be sure. Another thing that you can check here is sensitivity labels. So if you're interested in seeing or removing links for sharing links for only for your confidential files, you can filter them here and then select only those and remove sharing links from these confidential files. So that is completely up to you, but you have the option to filter, uh, amongst other things, uh, to filter by sensitivity label. Uh, another uh, link that I'm sure you're fam familiar with is the links shared with everyone. I'm sure you, you're aware of the dangers they may possess. The situation here is similar, so you can see all of those documents, you can select them and simply remove sharing file to make sure that not everyone can access this file. And finally, uh, public teams and groups, uh, they are important to review them just to make sure that your public workspaces should actually be public and uh, decide, or you can actually decide if there is a need for them to stay private in some cases, sorry, to stay public in some cases that might be appropriate, but most of the time it's leading to unintended data exposure. So if you select this number, you will see that there are 20 public workspaces in your company. You can once again do it by single selecting one of them, changing their privacy to private, or you can do it in bulk and change it all. If you're not certain as an admin the, about their privacy, and should they really be public for any reason, we are actually uh, soon to be implementing a new feature that will allow you to ask your site owners to actually review the privacy for you because they have the operational knowledge and might know it better than you do at this point. And now the automation part that I promise we will tackle. So if you go to uh, settings, you will see all of the policies that you have implemented in your tenant. And the one that we talked about at the beginning, private workspace is shared with everyone. You can see it here. So it is actually a default policy. So we get this one set up for you out of the box. And you can see that uh, the action taken is to resolve it manually. That's what we just saw right now. So we get a list of workspaces. You can decide to remove access to those large groups manually. 
But another thing you can do is resolve this automatically. So Syskit Point will do everything for you. It will remove access for these groups and automatically resolve this vulnerability for, for you. You will only see, see it in the logs that, okay, Syskit Point did this automatically for you. Another quite nice use case here is to maybe just leave this one default policy to uh, be manually resolved and you can create a new one because there is no limit here. So I can go ahead and do a new one. So private workspace is shared with everyone. I will call this one confidential private workspaces because I want to focus on them more and I want them those vulnerabilities to be resolved automatically. Okay, once I created this, I obviously need to apply this policy. So you can do it in two ways here. You can manually apply it to any workspaces you need, or you can apply it automatically with our rules engines, with, sorry, rules engine, which is, which is something we recommend. It will help you a lot by defining it like this. So let's say that this rule name is once again called confidential private workspaces. You are describing your rules so that if you have any colleagues or other IT admins so that they know why you created this one. But now I'm not really creative. I'll just do it like this. Uh, priority for me in this case is top level. So I would leave, leave it at one. And then the conditions part. So I want to include all of my workspaces that have the sensitivity label set to confidential. So from this drop down menu, I will select sensitivity label. I will select confidential and save this condition. And then you're defining of what you want to happen after this condition is met. And I want to apply this new policy that I just created. So it's called private workspaces shared with everyone and mine instance is confidential private workspaces. Okay, so I will save this. You can preview it just to make sure, okay, but which workspaces are we talking about? What will be included? And then within seconds, you will get all of the workspaces on your tenant that have the confidential sensitivity label applied listed here. And then you just make sure, just to make sure what happens. Another thing that is important is once you enforce this rule, it will automatically also apply to any new workspaces that you have that have this tenant, uh, sorry, that have the sensitivity label applied. So we understand the importance of sensitivity labels and that is the direction in which we actually aim to proceed. All right, so I'm finished with my rules and I'm actually also finished with my demo. So I think I showed you everything we have for now on the Scopilot readiness style and I will give my word back to Daniel to continue his presentation. Thanks, Alex. So, uh, before we jump into another part of this, and this is the automated versioning enforcement, I'm just going to quickly ask you another question just to get your feel around this. So, what do you believe? Uh, how much SharePoint storage is taken up by unnecessary versioning in your tenant? Okay, good. I believe we can close the poll. So, uh, 40% of you uh, are, are kind of two two things. So between 10 and 30% and 30 to 50%. And I must say that you are spot on. So uh, our research during the last year or so showed that on average, uh, organizations can save up to 40% uh, of their SharePoint storage by recouping or removing unnecessary versions. We've even, we've even had a couple of customers which said more than 60%, but these are the extremes. So actually this is, uh, let's say a big problem that we have been focusing on for, for a year now. And uh, with our new functionality, it's kind of uh, much easier to uh, enable or enforce, let's say these uh, versioning limits on uh, your tenant. So until now, we were focusing on manual removal of versioning because this is this is the problem that most of the customers that we talked to had. Uh, but the other biggest problem is, okay, they are now in a state where they have cleaned their tenant, they have cleaned all of the uh, unnecessary versions, but they are, uh, those versions are again growing. So they asked us a lot about how can we enforce this going forward. So this is why we focused on automated versioning limits. And what we've built here is uh, ability for, let's say you to define 
flexible versioning limit. So we understand that not every site needs to have uh, the same versioning limit. Uh, so that once you define all of these versioning limits, you will be able to uh, assign them automatically and consistently with the rules engine that uh, uh, Alex already showed. And the best thing here is that uh, there is no PowerShell required. You actually can do this through a Point UI with, uh, in bulk without running, as I said, any, any Power, PowerShell scripts. So that being said, let me jump straight into the demo. This is what you see for storage management. So under our settings, uh, Syskit Point comes with uh, default three limits. So you have an auto automatic limit, you have a manual limit, and you have an option to inherit tenant uh, version. So in those cases where you want your site to inherit the uh, what, whatever you have imposed on a tenant level, you can implement this versioning limit. On top of that, you can create your own versioning limit. So here we have a demo versioning limit, which is uh, very, very lenient. So it's, it, it keeps 20 versions or uh, 30 uh, days. So uh, at most, any version can live up to 30 days. After that, it is automatically re removed. And we have financial records, which is very, very strict. So it needs to keep 500 versions and it needs to keep them for 750 days uh, just because of, because of uh, let's say, some sort of regulation that, that you have. You can tweak this. You can create as many, uh, let's say, versioning limits as you would like, and you can create them here. So you just need to add a name. You can customize this how you want. Uh, you can say, for for example, have one with 500 versions that keeps for uh, 180 days. And uh, let's say this is demo two. And once I save this, all, uh, I can again add all of these uh, wrongly spelled policies again in, in my tenant. So uh, that is how you create those limits. Uh, but once you've created them, you actually need to apply them in in uh, in your tenant. So you can do this again, as said, uh, as uh, Alexa already mentioned, with with uh, our rules or with uh, the manual application. So let's let's just quickly go into the manual application how this is uh, working here. So I can see on my uh, let's say uh, tenant level report here that uh, my storage is currently at 60% and that my limit is tenant limit is set to a manual default limit. This is the limit that we had on the previous screen. So it's uh, 100 versions uh, being kept for up to 30 days. I can change that immediately here with this action. So if I set a new version limit, I can choose which versioning limit I want to apply or I can choose it to be automatic. So this automatic versioning limit is a new functionality that uh, let's say even Microsoft has been talking about uh, lately. It is uh, still in preview. They are uh, moving the preview dates and uh, general availability, but uh, let's say this is something that is uh, that they are also rolling out soon. And the good thing with this automatic versioning limit is that it will uh, keep the version based on the algorithm uh, that they have defined, which actually keeps the uh, older versions, a smaller amount of older versions, and all of the newer versions, they are keeping a, 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 lot of, a lot of them. So it kind of steadily decreases over time. But you have the ability to recover. Uh, it's kind of recommended for best recovery options. So that's uh, with the automatic, or you can choose any of the manual versioning limits that you have defined. So once I've said that on my tenant level, I see that my entire tenant currently is has an inherit tenant limit, which this means that all of the sites, all of the teams, everything that I have here is inheriting the versioning limit from my tenant. But if I have a need to change that, I can change that easily through through this uh, UI. So the only thing, for example, let's say that we have uh, the finance case is, is 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 a good one. So if I want to choose by department, for example, I can find a department here, and I can filter all of the finance department uh, teams that are uh, that have the, the the department finance. I can select them all, and in bulk, I can set the versioning limit here. So what this uh, then means is that I can manually override the tenant versioning limit with the financial records. 
and uh, this will this limit will then apply to these sites and teams that I have selected uh, manually. Thing the the other thing here is you can also remove existing file versions. So it's not just that we are applying the, the limits to the new uh, libraries. We, we are not uh, applying the limits to the new uh, documents here. It's also enabling you to clean up existing file versions before actually setting up the limit. So I can choose here what I want to delete. So if I select this here, I can say, okay, I want to delete all file versions, which means file versions that are older than six months. Please bear in mind that these numbers here, so six months and 50, 50 file versions is something that is customizable by you. Uh, by you. So you can say, okay, I want to uh, keep file versions that are older than 12 months, or I want to uh, delete all of the versions, but not, but keep, let's say the last uh, 100 versions here. So you're also able here to uh, remove existing versions and actually prepare your site uh, before applying the uh, tenant versioning limit. Okay, so uh, with that being said, uh, let's just briefly go into, uh, because all of this, as I said, this is all done for uh, the sites that you currently have for uh, the uh, new version limit. Uh, for, for the new uh, libraries. But uh, with the rules engine, as we discussed already and, and Alex showed, the good thing with, the, with this is that you can set up again a rule that says everything that is financial. So if I create here, let's take the same, uh, same example. So finance workspaces, finance workspace tenant lim uh, limit, so if I have this limit here, and if I have a rule for those, I can then in the next step say everything that has a department that is set to finance, please apply uh, version limit, which is for financial records. What this will do, the same as for the policies that Alex was explaining before, it doesn't matter how or when this uh, site or team has been created, it uh, Syscape Point will make sure that we apply the correct limits to that going forward. So you can have new sites that are created with the uh, department, which is finance, we will automatically apply this uh, tenant version limiting uh, on, on that site. Okay, again, you can preview that uh, as Alex showed you and you can finish. And once you've done this, uh, you're kind of putting uh, Syscape Point on autopilot to add the limits to, to your tenant. Okay, uh, so we've talked about a lot about how you can use actually the uh, rules engine here. And this is, uh, when we discussed that, this is why a lot of our customers were eagerly waiting for the functionality to ask their owners about, about uh, the metadata. So let's just briefly jump into the presentation again. And I'll just guide you through through uh, this part here. So what we've what we've done here. So we are currently rolling out metadata review, where you as IT teams can ask your workspace owners to add or update any metadata on on your uh, workspaces. So we know how important this is uh, for uh, workspace owners to kind of complete these tasks so that you can have the appropriate information within within your tenant. So we have focused a lot about uh, kind of making it as easy as possible for your workspace owners to, uh, to complete these tasks. But uh, as said, this is as always within point, uh, you are in control so you can keep the track of all of the metadata reviews and quickly see if uh, all of the owners have completed their tasks or some of them actually need some sort of a uh, gentle reminder to to complete the tasks. So that that being said, let's let's go back into the demo, and I'll show you how this will look like uh, from the side of uh, your workspace owner, as well as from you as the IT team. What you actually need to do to to start the process. Okay, we are back in point, and here uh, under uh, let's say on on most of our reports, what you can do is you can. For example, if you are interested in the region as a metadata, or maybe you're interested in the department as a metadata, let's just find a department. So you can filter those ones that, uh, for example, don't have this 
region and or department. Let's see if there are any that are blank. So I can filter those that don't have region or, or a department. And here I can select uh, those workspaces that I want them to actually fill in with the uh, metadata. So if I select even in bulk all of them, I have the ability to say here, manage metadata. So me as an admin, I can enter this myself, but it's better for me to ask the owners what uh, metadata I want them to fill to me. So this is all of the metadata that we have currently. You might have something different. So if I want to ask them to fill in the department, if I want them to, uh, to ask them to fill in the retention, maybe the region, I can ask multiple things from my department in one, uh, from my uh, owners in one go. I can ask them even a comment. So uh, I can say, please, metadata, and I can ask the owners to do uh, these tasks uh, quickly. What your owners will then get, they will get an email uh, saying, you need to fill in the metadata. This is what your company requires of you. And they will get a task. So you as an admin will have the ability to monitor those tasks here. And this is how they will actually, uh, and th but this is how they will look for, for those people. So for, for the owners, once they go into the review, they will get all of their tasks, where they, uh, all of the workspaces where they are the owner of and they will be able to change this. What they can do here is they can go one by one, choose what if something is uh, wrongly put, here, put in here. For example, contribute doesn't have a department, so they can add a department. So this is the uh, retail department. They can go through the retention. They can write up what the retention should be here. So this should be maybe one year. Uh, this one here should be two. Uh, what the region is, so they can select the region that they are in. Uh, they can do this uh, one by one, or if they have multiple, they can just select and fill in everything with uh, these shortcuts. So if, if everything is in their region, so if they have their region, they, they can pull it here, or if everything needs to be one year retention, they can update all of the rows and everything will be updated here. And then they can go in, and either complete these tasks one by one. So once they are sure that administration is fine, they can complete this task, they can uh, go, or they can again, complete everything in one go for all of the all of the information that they, they have entered. For them, this is it. So they, uh, they see this in this kind of Excel-like format, which everyone likes, let's put it like this, and they can easily enter all of the information from, from this one screen. For you as an admin, you can go into the, uh, the govern screen and review what the what they have actually been doing. So these are all the current current requested reviews, uh, how they are going. So we see that these are not being progressed well, but there is something in the history. So this has been completed. You can say you can see uh, what's what's actually been happening here what uh, what they have been doing so we see that branding 2022 was updated and completed by eva uh, and that the metadata has been updated this is the comment that eva left and i can even see the details what was changed so i can see that the department was changed to marketing on branding 2022 and this is uh, how we can actually uh, get the help from our workspace owners to get all of the information that is uh, that is necessary for you to then actually go into the policy engine and with the policy engine fine tune fine tune all of the uh, policies that you need to apply to your tenant so in this case when you have all of these rules set up it will as said automatically monitor your entire tenant and apply appropriate policies, be it uh, policies like uh, what uh, Alex was uh, speaking about earlier, be it tenant limits, everything is uh, automatically being applied by Syskit Point. So that's basically it from, from our demos. Uh, and uh, just before we jump into the Q&A session, so let's just briefly go through, uh, if you actually, liked what you saw so far uh, there is a 21 day free trial which you can try uh, trial on your own so feel free to contact us uh, if you have any questions regarding this uh, we will actually uh, be here to to support you on your trial 
And now, now we are coming to the interesting part of the, uh, of, the, of the questions that you have asked during the, during the session. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. I will jump in and read you some of the questions. I'll try to group mm -hmm. them because they, there are some of them that are quite similar, actually. So mm -hmm. let's start with the metadata part. So the first question is, I, maybe it was answered, it was actually posed early on, but where does department metadata come from? So the department metadata is actually the uh, property bag that you have on your workspace. So these are the property bags that we have loaded or let's say synced from your tenant. And this is something that you might have or might not have. But once you actually, uh, you can implement these uh, through Syskit Point as well. So you can add custom metadata in Syskit Point and then ask your owners to fill them up. Okay, great. And the second one regarding metadata is what if a owner provides incomplete or false metadata? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, as always, when you see something like that and you, you think that uh, something might be wrong, uh, you don't need to send this task in bulk. You can just resend the task to them. Uh, you'll see which owner this was. Uh, so you can say, okay, I want uh, you to provide new metadata. That's something that you can set, uh, send as, as much as possible. We don't uh, want you to, to be sending this on a daily basis, so this is why we, we've enabled uh, the bulk mode, but if there is something that uh, you actually fear is not correct, you can always resend the task. All right. Uh, okay, so now moving on to the sensitivity labels. Uh, mm -hmm. What if our organization doesn't use them? How can we still protect our sensitive content? Yeah, this is this is the interesting one. So obviously, uh, Microsoft and everyone is going heavily on on you actually starting to use sensitivity labels. So this is something that's helping Copilot uh, tweak the results and uh, provide correct results uh, to the correct audience. Uh, and I believe it's it's something that you'll eventually need to start looking into. But uh, so far, uh, we've heard this a lot from our customers, so we will also be uh, looking closely into if there is anything we from, from uh, Syskit Point can do to help you kind of manage this without the sensitivity label. So something that we are currently researching, so stay tuned for that. Okay, yeah, and let us know if you do have any more comments. We are always open to hear it. All right, so uh, next one is, uh, how can we ensure that uh, our owners are actively managing permissions? That's it. Oh yeah, uh, so that's that's kind of a, a, a longer discussion. Uh, I will uh, say that there are two ways through, uh, through point that you can do. Uh, I will also ask you to kind of maybe uh, watch the previous uh, uh, webinar that we had. This was, mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of discussion about that in short. Uh, there is the functionality we call access reviews. So you can use access reviews periodically to help you or to help your uh, end users or owners uh, actively actively manage their permissions on their, their workspaces. This is one way. Or the other way, uh, you can also add your owners uh, to be collaborators within Syskit Point. They will have uh, their own UI where they will see only their workspaces and they can proactively use Syskit Point to manage the permissions themselves. So this is, let's say, this delegated management uh, going into, into actually owners being responsible for their own workspaces is something that you can do relatively easy through through Syskit Point. Mm -hmm. But again, pre please do watch the previous webinar because there was a lot of talk about that, how we can help you. All, also in the, in the, let's say, spaces of uh, oversharing and everything, how en end users or owners can help you with that. All right. Um, we do have a few more coming in as we speak, so I'll try to be quick. So does your product do onboarding and offboarding of users? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so uh, I believe it's it's maybe uh, best that we discuss this topic, uh, let's say, uh, separately. So this is something that uh, we help with. We would like to understand a bit more about the general use cases that, that, that you have here. So someone will for sure be reaching out just to find out more details and then we can provide maybe a better answer, more concrete answer to, 
to this. All right. Uh, now to regarding uh, Siskit point plans. So the first one is which plan is needed for co-pilot readiness? Mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of co-pilot readiness uh, to manage co-pilot uh, to kind of go into with all of the policies and everything, this is the governance plan. So uh, the governance plan is the plan where we have all of the policies, where all of the end users can help you. And this is what we would suggest you to use to actually get the most out of out of uh, being and kind of becoming co-pilot ready, but also to stay co-pilot ready. So governance plans is, is the way to go. All right. And the second one is in which package will one get all these features in? That yeah. we saw? It's the same. It's the same answer. So uh, briefly, uh, just to kind of maybe differentiate so the lowest package is for reporting the mid package uh, contains auditing uh, fu functionality and the uh, top package the governance package is the one with uh, all of the delegated management uh, functionalities and this is the uh, one that uh, is the most prominent for all of the oversharing and and uh, copilot risks all right great uh, now one uh, regarding storage. So other than the ability to clean up versions, are there any other storage management options that can help clean up stale or unnecessary files? So uh, we've researched this uh, heavily uh, during the last year. And as I said, the biggest problems, the, big, the biggest problems comes through versioning. So versioning is the number one thing that uh, kind of occupies the storage. There are ways how you can uh, see all of the stale files that are there in your environment uh, on Syskit Point. The, the, these are reporting, but we are not going into the deletion of files. So this is something that we can provide your report. These are all of the files that were not used for, I don't know, two years. Uh, and then you can uh, do this. You, you can send this to the owners. You can do whatever you want with those. But the, the reporting is there. There are no actions. Uh, that will delete uh, unused content. We haven't focused on that. All right. And another one regarding storage. Is it planned to add an approval workflow for storage increase requests coming from users? So this is uh, not something that we are currently focusing on. So uh, when you say uh, storage increase, so you uh, most probably have an internal process uh, that uh, kind of in, uh, helps you uh, with that. So we can maybe uh, take this offline. I would like to understand a, a bit more about how your how your process works and we can maybe see what what if there is anything that we can help with. At the moment, a short answer is this is not something that we have planned for. All right, I believe that's all from the questions today. If anything comes in later, we will make sure to answer it and get back to you as soon as possible. Okay then, so uh, thanks everyone. Then this this is kind of the end of the webinar that we had. Hope you learned something. Uh, feel free again to reach out to us. Uh, we are here to help you with all of the challenges that you have. And that's, uh, that's it basically. So thanks everyone. Uh, thanks for joining and see you on another webinar. Bye Thank everyone. Thank you, bye bye.